You may be wondering why I have this on my wrist. No one was wondering. Well, I fell off a ladder oh! and sprained my wrist. We know that systems have structure and are made up of smaller parts. Our body, for example, is a system that's made up of smaller parts. When I fell off the ladder and hit oh! the ground, the muscles and ligaments in my wrist were rearranged slightly. We know that atoms have structure. Here's sodium. Sodium has 11 protons, 12 neutrons, and 11 electrons. That one valence electron, if you bring it near, let's say, chlorine, it's gonna lose that one electron and its structure is rearranged to form sodium chloride. The same happens with molecules. A molecule consists of two or more atoms bonded together. If you take Alka-Seltzer and dissolve it in water, the molecules making up Alka-Seltzer will become rearranged. This is called a chemical reaction. And chemical equations tell the story of how they happen. For example, let's say I take lemons, sugar, and water, mix them together to make lemonade. The lemons, the sugar, and the water can be considered to be reactants in a chemical equation. And the lemonade would be the product Every chemical reaction has reactants, which you start with, and products. Sometimes it may just be one reactant. Sometimes there may be one product. There are so many reactions that are occurring every day, actually every second. Plants take in carbon dioxide and water, and they use sunlight as the energy to react and produce glucose and oxygen, and animals take in that oxygen and that glucose when we eat to produce carbon dioxide and ATP, the energy that's keeping us moving and talking and alive. This is nothing but taking in molecules and rearranging them. Let's go to the lab. It's over there. This yeah. is the lab? Yes. Where's your lab coat? I don't have one. All right, I have crushed up Alka-Seltzer in water. When Alka-Seltzer, which is just sodium bicarbonate and citric acid, when Alka-Seltzer is added to water, that reaction involves three molecules of sodium bicarbonate, one molecule of citric acid, and one water molecule to produce four molecules of water three carbon dioxide molecules, and a molecule of sodium citrate. Wait, 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 how did carbon dioxide get in this? Well, it came from the Alka-Seltzer when it was rearranged. Oh, what happened to the citric acid? It just left? No. The carbon dioxide wasn't created and the citric acid wasn't destroyed. And that's because matter can't be created or destroyed just rearranged and reused. All of our atoms are still present mm, here. I don't believe that. Let's go back to the board. Ouch. So let's get our equation on the board. Um, how did you do that? It's magic. So here's our equation. The only elements that we started with in the reactants are just sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. Um, that's all? Yeah, that's it. You see anything else? The coefficient, which is the large number, tells us how many molecules of sodium bicarbonate we have. If we had three molecules, that means within those three molecules, we had three sodiums, three hydrogen, three carbons, and nine oxygens. To make it simple, we can just multiply the coefficient by every subscript in that formula. If you don't see a subscript, it's one. 
If you don't see a coefficient, it's one. Here we have six carbons, eight hydrogens, and seven oxygen atoms. And in this one water molecule, we have two hydrogens and one oxygen. With a grand total of three sodium atoms, 13 hydrogen atoms, nine carbon atoms, and 17 oxygen atoms. I bet you $10 we're gonna have the same number of atoms in the product. Um, you don't have any money? Mind your business. In our products, we have six carbon atoms right here, five hydrogens, seven oxygen atoms, and three sodium. In those four water molecules, there are how many hydrogens? Eight hydrogens. And we have four oxygen atoms. And in those three carbon dioxide molecules, there are three carbon atoms and six oxygen atoms, giving us a grand total of three sodium atoms, 13 hydrogens, nine carbons, and 17 oxygen atoms in the products. We have the same amount of matter at the end that we had at the beginning. That means matter was conserved, just like the law of conservation of matter states. Matter cannot be created or destroyed, just rearranged. And if we have the same amount of matter, that must mean that we have the same amount of mass as well. But can we get evidence of that? Let's see. We're going back to the lab. Why are you acting okay. like the lab isn't in the same room? It's like 10 mm, steps can away. Can you be quiet? All right. All you need is a half-filled water bottle, a balloon, Alka-Seltzer tablets. I already crushed mine up. I got some students I have to do this for. And a small kitchen scale. If you've already done our carbon dioxide balloon lab with yeast, you may already have some of these. So you wanna crush the tablets and insert them into the balloon. Put the half-filled water bottle and the balloon with the crushed Alka-Seltzer onto the scale. Read it and record your math. Then you want to secure your balloon onto the top of the bottle. Be careful, make sure it does not fall in. And then let the Alka-Seltzer react with the water. Please use protective eyewear if you have it. Let the Alka-Seltzer fully react. Awesome. Our Alka-Seltzer or our sodium bicarbonate and citric acid has now been rearranged. So let's put it back on the scale and record the mass again after the reaction has occurred. And you know, I have some questions for you. Were your values before and after, are they the same or are they different? If they're different, was the mass afterwards higher or lower than before? Are the values significantly different? Regardless of the outcome, why do you think this occurred? So if your masses are the same, why do you think that occurred? If your masses are different, why do you think that occurred? What was the purpose of using the balloon during this experiment? If we didn't use it, would that have affected our results? If you had to repeat this experiment, what would you revise or improve next time? The handout for this lab and other resources are available at crsi.org. I look forward to seeing you again. Uh, hold on, you owe me $10. Yeah, you owe me $10. Come on. <laughs>